rolling. Hey quilters, you wanted a video on how to make these rings. This is a completed set for one of my sets. But I copy all of these on vellum. This is one of the things that I learned to do because I like the way it works. And I use a permanent ink marker to make the rings. So the rings do come, the patterns come in patterns when you order them. And they'll have newspaper prints. But I have a lot of trouble with those. They're real wimpy and they fall apart. This works great for me. And this is what I do. I use a jeans needle always when I'm sewing through this heavy paper. And I've got my quarter inch ruler handy, this handy, my iron's on. And I'm going to do a set of eight, but there's a set of eight and a set of ten that goes with this. So you've got two different sets that you're making. I'm going to work with this set of eight today, but I have colors for both. This is a set of eight colors, and this is a set of ten colors. And I'm going to work with those. And when you're doing this, make sure that your dark is 8 and your dark is 10 on the big sets. And it works down in color. So your light and dark meet together like this one. Where did I put them? So your dark and light, when you put them together, meet like that. And when the rings are put together, they work out perfectly. So. I'm using two and a half inch strips. I've got some Judy Niemeyer strip sets, but two and a half inch strips for any wedding ring quilt work great. And each strip will make 17 blocks, each set of strips. I also have my jelly bellies handy in case I make a mistake to console myself, and that works pretty good. So we're going to start out. I'm going to start between lines one and two. It works best to start in the middle. So. Here is color number five, color number four, color number three. I'm going to work with one and two, and I'm going to put six, seven, and eight on the other knee. So I've got my colors separated. Now I'm going to press these two colors out. Make sure they're pressed well. Let's see which one's one. One is the flowers. So I'm going to place that on top. Now I'm working with batiks. Batiks very rarely have different sides. So I'm going to place that on top of number two. I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. And I'm going to place the papers right here. I'm sewing between line one and two. I'm going to place that line where I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam. And let's go here. Be sure you how to use a long strip set. I'm going to do one with the long strip set and then just complete a couple of the things so you can see how they work. Let's see here. As you're working along, make sure that your strips stay straight together. I'm almost through with these and ready to make the quilt top. But getting all the strip sets done first really makes it a lot easier. So that's the thing that I work on the hardest. When I get all of these together and I start piecing the blocks, I'll do another video I'll show you how to piece the blocks together. Okay. Not leaving much space between these, you don't need to.
tape the complete set together. Here's probably like vellum. I take that down, they lay down. The newsprint doesn't do that. It folds under. I have a lot of problems with it. But this, set the seam and roll it out. There's your first two colors. Press that out. And then I like my ironing board close to my cutting board because then I can go like this, lay them out again. Now I'm ready to cut those apart with my rotary cutter. There's one, two, there's the first one. cut these others apart for later work. There's the fourth color. Whoops, I did press that out, didn't I? Get a little anxious there. Color number four. Quite on the edge there. And turn that back now between four and five. Trim that quarter inch again before you put on the next color. Here's color four, five, between four and five. Okay, we're ready for five. Smooth. When you get on the end, it's a little different. You have to be careful about the angle because the angles you leave a little extra room at the end. And I just broke my thread. How do you do that? Let's see. Thread my needle again. Jelly belly mistake. I hate it when my thread breaks. Each time I'm sewing right on the line, and that makes it a little easier to work with. Same pattern. Only now it's on the end. I'm going to cut the ring off and then turn it and cut that end off. Make sure that's trimmed and you've got the end of that ring. Okay, now that I've got those on, I need to do so from light to dark on the other colors. 
So I'm going to pick up the lightest color because I want eight to be the darkest. And I'm going to flip those over now upside down away from me like that. And I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to lay that color, the line between one and six, right there. Pull my thread out so I don't accidentally break it again. Let's see, here we go. One six. Half inch strips make this really easy. And Judy Niemeyer puts them in order on hers when you buy them. And I usually take out the black because I don't like to put the black in, but I have a number of batiks of my own that I've added into this project. And so I set up my own colors. When I get done here, I'll show you what's in on the bed because I have all my colors spread on the bed and I go back and forth. Last week they were spread out on the living room couches, both ends and on the end tables because I had so many colors. Now we're down to a lot fewer colors because I have a good share of the rings already made. Let's see, six and seven. done. Okay, that color's on. Now, next color. Once again, laying that between the six and seven, that's where my soul line is. process if you have a handy working space like my husband's built for me with the quilters ironing board and everything it really makes it easy so it's easy to do the project lay that in order so I can finish the rest of them later and that edge helps if you trim all the way. Holding back on the line between seven and eight. Trim that. We're almost done with these. Have one more color to put on. It usually takes me about a half an hour to do, if I do the whole strip of 17, it usually takes me about 30 minutes to do that. And it takes me about 45 minutes to do the, the set of 10. It takes a little time when I do them all at once like that. Okay, last color. This is color number 8. Now this is a real angle. And this one needs to be... Turn very carefully so you're going to have enough room. So I'm going to leave a little extra on the end. So I'm down the line. My husband says I make funny faces when I'm sewing. I suppose I do. So you can probably see those on the video while I make funny faces. 
the last color, roll it over, press it out, put it on the cutting board. Remember this time on the end, we turn and cut the end off. There is a finished strip. colors aside for the rest of it but now I have a finished set and I have a total of six of them made because we tried to do the video earlier and I made too many mistakes so I um, have a set of six of those and when I make the 12 or the other set of 10 then I'll have 17 sets of rings ready for the quilt. And that's a neat way to do it. Fastest way I know of. I've made a belly wedding star and used this same method from Judy Neymars. If you love that quilt, it's an easy paper piece one to make and it's an awesome thing. And let's go into the bedroom. Can we pick up the tripod? And let's go show them what's in the other room. Hang on. Yeah. Let's go into the bedroom here and look at what I had spread out. Uh, this is all the things on the bed. That stuff's going to the quilt guild this week, but all of these blocks or different strips are what's left over so far. And over here in the bookcase is the ones that are put together. I've got some strips separated here and there for the quilt. This is the quilt that I'm making. I'm working on this little one right here. And it's Judy Niemeyer's. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you have fun learning how to make this kind of a quilt and the easy way to make the ring sets for a wedding ring quilt. Love you. Have a fun day.